Hey, Lana. My family is heading to your place in just a short time. Please stay awake to open the door for us. Your whole family is coming to my house? Why this late at night? It's already 9 p.m. Oops, my bad. I'm sorry for not letting you know earlier, but David and I have decided to move in and stay with you. We're bringing all of our stuff with us too. You're planning to move in with me? But why the sudden decision? I haven't had the chance to prepare anything yet. You've been living alone since my father-in-law passed away, so it must have been pretty lonely for you all this time. That's why Dad and I really think it's a great idea if our whole family moves in and we all live together with you. I know how much you've missed your granddaughter, Cynthia, right? Well, she's missed you too. In fact, she's been longing to spend more time with her awesome grandma. Please excuse me if I'm being a bit intrusive, but I'm curious. Did something happen to your previous house? It's a long story, Lana, and I don't think I have enough time to talk about it right now. Basically, we're facing some financial trouble stemming from a failed business venture. But I assure you that we'll only be staying at your house temporarily. It won't be long until David and I find a new place to settle in. You don't sound too thrilled about our family moving in. What's the matter? I just feel like your family moving in is happening quite suddenly. It would mean a lot to me if you or David could let me know in advance about such plans instead of coming to my house with all your belongings like that. But I'm telling you now, aren't I? It's not like I didn't mention our family's move at all. By the way, Lana, can you clear out the biggest room in your house for us? You know, since there are two of us, me and David, it just makes sense for us to use the largest room, don't you think? If you don't have an extra room for the little one, Cynthia can stay with you. You're always wanting more bonding time with her, so I think it's a win-win idea. I do miss Cynthia a lot. She's such an adorable and lovely little girl. It's quite unfortunate that I haven't had many opportunities to spend time with her over the past five years. Are you seriously starting to point fingers at us now? You know both David and I have crazy work schedules, which is why we couldn't bring Cynthia over to your place as often as we wanted. But look, we're here now, aren't we? I promise you'll have plenty of quality time with her. Trust me on that. I understand that you have a lot going on, but it feels like you haven't even given me the chance to see Cynthia. Every time I bring up the idea, you always seem to find excuses to turn me down. Hey, can't we just leave the past behind and focus on building a better future where we all get along? By the way, now that we've sorted out the living arrangements, I also need to tackle the financial issues that are stressing me and my husband out every day. Lana, would it be possible for you to lend me $5,000? I promise to pay you back as soon as I can. $5,000? Are you and David really facing such a critical situation? I recall lending David some money not too long ago. You bet we were. You know, David's health has been taking a toll, and the doctor recommended some much needed rest. Honestly, the failed business venture and the whole house moving situation have really put a strain on our finances. If it wasn't for your incredible kindness and in letting us move in with you, we'd probably be out on the streets by now. We've pretty much exhausted all our cash savings and even emptied our bank accounts. We're really struggling to cover our day-to-day -day expenses at this point. I'm sorry, Rosie. I truly had no idea. Frankly, you didn't share much about your financial situation with me, so I had no way of knowing that you and David were going through such difficult times. Well, now you know. So please hurry up and transfer the money to my bank account. It's just $5,000, not a huge amount or anything. I'm sure you can handle it without any issues, right? We really need it as soon as possible. I'm sorry, but may I consult David about this matter first? I have some reservations about lending out such a substantial amount of money based solely on text messages. Oh, no problem. Feel free to ask David directly about it when we get to your place in just a little while. By the way, since our whole fam is heading your way, it would be amazing if you could cook something delicious for me. You have no idea how hungry I am right now. Oh, and if you could get the bath ready, that would be fantastic. Goodness gracious, I could really use a nice, warm soak after this whole house moving ordeal. It's got me exhausted.
Hey mom, I actually ran out of the money you sent me the other day. Can you please hook me up with some more? You've already used up all of it? It's only been a few weeks since I sent you the money. How did you manage to go through it so quickly? That was the money I had to take from my savings. I'm sorry, but I don't think I can continue to provide financial assistance. What? You said you were gonna help me and my family, remember? Was that all just empty words? You know perfectly well how my declining health is affecting me. If you truly consider yourself a loving and caring mother like you always claim to be, you should lend a hand to your own son. I can't believe you're backing down on your promises so easily. David, I understand that you'd like more support, but I truly believe I have done the best I could. There are limitations, you know. Since you and your wife moved into my house, it feels like all you do is give me orders, expect me to prepare meals every day, cater to your every need, and now you're even asking for money every week. It's becoming too much. Come on, you still have your savings, right? Just hand it all over to me, and I'll make sure to put it to good use. You're aware that I've already spent a significant portion of my savings to finance your dad's operation, and now I don't have much left for myself. If you continue asking me for more money like this, I will end up bankrupt. Wait, what about Cynthia? Don't you even care about her? She's just a little girl for crying out loud. Can you honestly bear the thought of her going hungry? I can't believe you'd be so heartless. What happened to the loving and respectable mother I once knew? Please, take a moment to think of your family and your own granddaughter instead of only focusing on your own selfish needs. Don't worry, if Cynthia needs anything, I will personally cover the expenses from my own pocket. I assure you that she will receive the best care she needs. Alright, fine. I'll let go of the money issue for now. But don't even think that you're off the hook just yet. Besides, David, I don't think that I can keep preparing three meals a day for your entire family anymore. You know I volunteer at a facility every day, starting early in the morning until late afternoon. I barely have any time for myself anymore. Come on, you just need to wake up earlier. Maybe even at 3 a.m. if it's necessary. Don't make it seem like your volunteer work is such a huge deal. Seriously, do you care more about strangers than your own family? That's what hypocrites do. Please, don't misunderstand me like that. You know how much I love volunteering and helping others, but it doesn't mean that I don't care about you or anyone else in our family. If you're not going to do anything for us or my family, then what good are you? Quit being so stubborn and start fulfilling your responsibilities as a mother, or else we'll cut ties with you and move far away somewhere. And trust me, you won't have a clue about our new address either. By then, you won't get to see Cynthia anymore. Take a good, hard think about it and tell me, is that really what you want to happen? No, please don't do that. You know how much I care about my granddaughter, don't you? You can't simply forbid me from seeing her. I'm her grandmother after all. Yeah, I get it. Cynthia is your soft spot, isn't she? Well, if you want to keep seeing Cynthia, then you better step up your game and do something truly meaningful. You know, like sending me some money, for example. Just let me think, okay? I can't come up with money that easily. Alright, then gather up at least $30,000 for now and send it to my bank account. Oh, and don't forget to make sure my family gets three meals a day too. Let's get a move on, Lana. Cynthia, I'm currently at the grocery store near your school to get something for our family to eat tonight. I believe your class will be ending soon, correct? Would you like me to pick you up from school today? I'm sorry about my parents, Grandma. They make you wake up early and do all the housework every day while they just lay around at home and do nothing. I don't want to burden you even more by asking you to pick me up from school. I'm perfectly capable on my own. I'm already in the ninth grade, so I can handle everything quite well. You don't need to apologize, Cynthia. I must admit, I am a bit concerned about your parents. Anyway, how is the new school treating you? Are you managing to keep up with your studies? Ugh, Grandma, you know what? I'm not really feeling like chatting about school and studies right now. It's just not my favorite topic, you know? Oh, my dear, what's the matter? Did something happen at school? Please, don't hesitate to tell me. You know you can share absolutely everything with me, don't you? Well, it's not exactly about that, Grandma, but please don't worry. Everything's totally fine, I promise. 
Oh, my sweet Cynthia, are you really certain that everything is all right? I can't help but notice that you've been carrying a heavy heart lately. Please, remember that you can confide in me without any hesitation. Your secrets are safe with me. Grandma, I hope you won't be too shocked by what I'm about to tell you, but the thing is I haven't actually been going to middle school for a while now. Oh, my dear, haven't you been going to school? But I see your parents taking you out of the house every single day. It's true that I leave the house every day, but instead of going to school, I head straight to my workplace. What? A workplace? You mean, you're actually working every day? Oh my goodness, dear. Aren't you a bit too young for that? Yeah, but mom and dad forced me to lie about my age so the employers could hire me at their workplaces. In fact, I'm working several part-time jobs at the moment. This is unacceptable! I can't believe Rosie and David would push you into working instead of going to school like any other child your age. No wonder they never let me pick you up from school. This just breaks my heart. I really, really miss going to school and hanging out with my friends, Grandma. It's been real tough not being able to say goodbye to them or my teachers from my old school. You won't believe what happened. One night, out of the blue, my parents dragged me into a truck and said we were moving. They even made me promise that I wouldn't tell you anything about it. It's been so hard keeping the secret from you. I'm so sorry that I didn't notice earlier, Cynthia. You've been struggling so hard all this time. Thank you for telling me all of this. No, no, Grandma, it's not your fault at all. I'm the one who should be apologizing. I deliberately kept everything a secret from you because I was so scared of Mom and Dad. But now with everything that's happened, I think there's something else you need to know. What is it, my sweetheart? You can tell me everything, especially if it's about your well-being. I promise I'll do my best to help you through this terrible situation you're in. You're not alone, my dear. I'll always be here for you. Well, it's not about me, Grandma. It's actually about you. I honestly don't want to upset you, but I overheard Mom and Dad talking about you yesterday. They were planning to take some sort of property deed from your place and then pretend you have dementia to place you in a facility. I just couldn't hold it in anymore, Grandma. I can't let them do that to you. Goodness gracious! They're actually considering such a wicked plan against me? Cynthia, my dear, I appreciate your concern for me. You know, I've endured so much of what your parents have put me through, all for your sake. But now, after hearing everything you've shared, I've reached my breaking point. It's just too much to bear. Cynthia, don't you worry about a thing. Just leave everything to me. By the way, when are you planning to take your school entrance exams? Well, I want to go to a place called Melody Heights Academy of Vocal Arts. But with everything going on and lack of money, I'm afraid I might not even be able to apply. Oh, Melody Heights Academy of Vocal Arts? I'm familiar with that place. It's a school specialized in vocal training, isn't it? You know what? I've got wonderful news for you, my dear. The person who founded that school happens to be a dear and close friend of mine and your grandfather. Really? That's great, Grandma. You won't believe it, but my biggest dream is to sing and use my voice to inspire and uplift all the less fortunate people out there. I want to make them smile and remind them that they're not alone in this world. It means everything to me. My dear, that's such a noble cause. I've always known that you possess a natural talent for singing. It's like it's ingrained in you. Whenever I hear you sing, it brings me such joy and comfort. <laughs> Thank you for your kind words, Grandma. But you know, my parents aren't exactly supportive of me pursuing my career as a singer. Whenever I mention the idea, they either laugh at me, make fun of me, or give me a cold and despised look. They've told me that it's just a stupid and unrealistic dream that will never come true. Instead, they've forced me into working and earning money for them to spend. It's really disheartening. But my dear, despite the difficult circumstances, I know you never gave up on your dream, did you? I can hear you practicing your vocals every single day. Please, don't worry. I'll do everything in my power to support you in continuing your studies. You can count on me, my sweet granddaughter. Together, we'll make sure your dreams become a reality. Hey, old woman, where's my money? I haven't seen a dime of that 30,000 yet. Quit ignoring me and just hand over the cash already. Do you seriously want me to cut you out of our lives? Think about it. You won't get to see your precious granddaughter ever again. If you really want, we can sever ties. However, before I make any decisions, there are some things I need to clarify with you. Listen, it's been a while since Cynthia has been enrolled in middle school, isn't it? What? Who told you that nonsense? 
Just hear me out, David. I'm not done talking yet. I'm not finished speaking yet. It's not just about her lack of enrollment in middle school. You've also been making her work illegally on the side, haven't you? No, you've got it all twisted. Whoever told you this must have some serious vision or mental problems. Honestly, they must have mistaken Cynthia for someone else. This is all just a big misunderstanding. That's enough, David. I have more than enough evidence to prove that you've been coercing your daughter to lie about her age and work illegally. No matter what you say, the truth can no longer be hidden. What? You're saying you have evidence? Look, it's not what you're thinking. You already knew about our business going down the drain, right? We were broke, so we had to do whatever it took to keep up with the household expenses. Once we get the 30000 you promised me, Cynthia can quit her job and go back to middle school no problem. Alright, then answer me another question. Why haven't you been working all this time? Are you truly on medical leave? If that's the case, which hospital did you go to? Show me some proof, like a receipt or health insurance card. Hey, why are you suddenly being so nosy? I don't have anything to hide, okay? Quit poking into my personal life. You don't have the right to do that. Just tell me the truth, David. You're just lying because you don't want to go to work, aren't you? Stop saying things like that. I didn't go to any hospital, but something really traumatic happened, and it's been difficult to deal with, okay? David, just be honest with me and tell me what really happened. If you do, I'll consider giving you the money you're asking for. Alright, alright. I'll tell you the truth now. Happy? Look, remember about the failed business I mentioned last time? I was actually betrayed by a business partner, a guy named Brian. He took off with all the money I worked so hard to earn. He had control over the core know-how and equipment, so I was powerless without him. Oh, so that's what happened. See? I'm the victim here. That's why I couldn't pay the rent and other bills and I had to move. Now just give me that money you promised me already. Look son, why don't you just reveal the truth for once? What truth? Stop talking nonsense, you're just wasting my time. David, I'm already aware of the true reason behind your desperate need for money. As your business started to thrive, you allowed yourself to become consumed by destructive habits like drinking, gambling, and drug use. Consequently, you ended up accumulating a tremendous amount of debt. And to make matters worse, you resorted to deceiving your business partner, taking all the earnings for yourself, and even getting involved with payday lenders. How do you know all this? You don't have any proof, so your words are just empty talk. Quit trying to intimidate me with your pointless threats. That's not the complete story, David. After that, you sneaked away in the dead of night, taking Cynthia with you and leaving behind a trail of chaos and confusion. Do you have any idea how hard it was for Cynthia? She was thrown into chaos without understanding the reason. She couldn't even say goodbye to her friends and teachers. Do you understand how scared and hurt she actually felt? Listen, Lana, it's not what you think, okay? I was actually planning to work again once things settled down. What exactly have you done, David? All you've done is continuously demand money and meals from me, while forcing Cynthia to work tirelessly. And let's not forget your elaborate scheme, where you plan to manipulate the deeds to my house and land, making it appear as if I had lost my sanity. Your ultimate goal was to have me placed in a facility and then seize everything for yourself. You came here with this malicious intent right from the start, didn't you? Shut up, you keep making me out to be a criminal! Just because you're my mother doesn't mean you can make baseless accusations, got it? Oh, there's no need to worry, David. I already have a witness by my side, and he's ready to expose all of your misdeeds. It's Brian, your former business partner, sitting right here next to me. Would you like to have a word with him? And before you even think about running away, don't bother, because the police have already caught up with you. They're waiting for you outside. This is insane! Stop joking around with me. You know, it's not funny. Not at all. Wait. There's actually a police car outside, and it seems like the police officer is looking my way. David, this is me, Brian. The only thing you can do right now is pay me the money or turn yourself into the police. Uh, b, b brian Wait, you don't have to do this, you know? I admit, I was entirely wrong and I'm truly sorry. I'll pay you back, I promise. To be honest, I wasn't running away, I just needed a little more time. Just a bit longer, Please, maybe another two weeks? Save your breath, David. You're just gonna sneak out in the middle of the night and move again. You think I trust the words of someone who's lied to me before? I'll ask you one more time. Will you return the $30,000 you stole from me now? 
or will you go to the officer outside? Which is it? Hey mom, I know you're there, so let me ask you something. If I get arrested, Cynthia will be the daughter of a criminal. Your meddling has ruined your sweet granddaughter's life. If you don't want that to happen, give me the money now. David, I don't think that will be an issue. Cynthia is going to take the entrance exams for Melody Heights Academy of Vocal Arts. It's the school she's been dreaming of and where she wants to study. A reputable institution for professional vocal training. Trust me, even if you're not around, I will continue to take good care of our granddaughter. Now it's high time, David. Either turn yourself in or be prepared for the police to take action and apprehend you by force. Are you out of your mind? Prison? Seriously? No way, I can't handle that. You're being a pretty lousy mom right now. What kind of mother just throws her own flesh and blood into prison without even batting an eye? It's insane, Lana. You can't do this to me. It's just not fair. Mom, please, I'm begging you, don't put me through this. It's disheartening to see your own child in police custody, but David needed to take responsibility for his actions. He gambled away $50,000 and took $30,000 from his former business partner, Brian, and borrowed $20,000 more from payday lenders. Moreover, the total amount he siphoned from me was around $20,000. Of course, both Brian and I intend to claim every penny. Eventually, he was in prison for financial fraud and embezzlement. Upon hearing of David's imprisonment, Rosie didn't show any interest. Not long after that, she filed for divorce and ended their marriage. Later on, it was discovered that Rosie had been romance scammed and swindled a substantial amount of money by someone who claimed to be a famous actor. Since she had already divorced David, she had no one to turn to and had lost her means of livelihood. Judging on Rosie's history of neglecting her daughter, I was granted Cynthia's custody. After that, I sold my house and land and moved to an apartment near Melody Heights Academy of Vocal Arts. The house and the land, located in the prime urban area, had a huge asset value, fetching me several million dollars. I also made sure that Cynthia would be the beneficiary of these assets, so she'd never face financial hardships. Eventually, Cynthia managed to take the entrance exam for her favorite school and got in. Now she's heading straight towards her dream, enjoying her youthful days surrounded by friends.